Hello again folks, hope you're all well hey, and welcome to another video from the hard drive that time forgot. Now I've noticed some people in the comments asking for more rat videos. Well rats is something I don't really get much of an opportunity at, and as I'm sitting editing this now, with another lockdown engaged, it's sort of difficult to get out after them anyway. However, I did find some old footage on the hard drive from about seven years ago where a farmer asked me if I would call up and help sort out some rats that were helping themselves to the meal in the cattle sheds. So when I went up in the daytime I found footprints everywhere in the mud outside the door. So I called up that night and used dollops of I think it was Nutella and golden syrup here and there to try and hold the rats attention long enough to get a shot. The rats seemed to be coming up out of a pipe that ran down into the slurry tank, running along the base of the wall and onto the door, and up into the cattle shed. So with the bait in place I retreated back towards the van, which gave me a nice comfy place to sit about 10-15 yards away. The rifle I'm using is my old Sandwell Field Sports BSA Super 10 Custom. This was before I sent it to John Bowkit and got fully blueprinted. Ah, need to put my teeth back in. Now, the night vision, those of you who may recognise it, is a bit of a blast from the past. The, it's one of the original Night Sight NS200 units. Now, you can say all you like about these early units. The quirky head-up shooting position. The white light that shone into your face off the LED screen. The battery that was the size and weight of a house brick. But these are what started the whole digital night vision craze off. So when you're sitting behind your modern PARDs, Yukons or Pulsar units, remember where it all started from, as these old NS200s must have been the first commercially available digital night vision for the air gunner rimfire or centre fire shooter. So you're probably all wondering why have I kept this footage under wraps for so long. Well I was sort of hoping to use it in a DVD at some point but after editing it through the lockdown I realised that even though it was only seven years ago things have moved on so much that the footage from the NS200 is nowhere near as good as what the other modern units are producing nowadays. So it wouldn't make sense to put subpart footage into a DVD, so I thought I'd upload it to YouTube for you all to watch now. Anyway, that's enough yakking from me. Let's see some rats, hey. I could have shot this rat ten times over, but I was actually curious to see if it would take a wee bit of a nibble at my Nutella and golden syrup mix. Unfortunately it decided to shun my culinary genius and scarp her off out of the road. But after a few minutes it reappeared again and this time by the way it was sniffing the air it must have been finding my sweet chocolatey surprise quite appealing. Unfortunately we'll never really know as it got the surprise before it got the chocolate. I don't usually constantly scan the area, as I always find that extra movement might spook the rats, but prefer to sit still in the van for 4 or 5 minutes, then switch the unit on, scan the whole area, then switch the unit off again, wait for another 4 or 5 minutes before scanning the whole place again. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but that's usually what I do. Ah, looks like the rats have found more than one way into this shed. Ah, 
Oh, there's another one sitting pretty. But I can't take the shot, as that's not concrete behind it, but actually a bullock, and they don't react too well to getting hit with a pellet. It's funny how a black and white picture can catch you out at times. That's the pipe that leads down into the slurry tank that the rats are using to come up into the yard. I could shoot him where he's sitting, but I don't want him blocking the pipe. So I'm hoping he'll come up out where I can get a shot at him. I definitely hit him in the head somewhere, but it looks as if he needs a follow up shot. Thankfully though, that's just what I managed to get before he disappears down that pipe. Oh, there's a couple more, but they're not hanging around. A wee bit of bait up there might help things, as anything to the left hand side of that steel post there is a safe shot, as there's a heavy wooden plank holding the silage back. I probably should have had the head shot off there, and he's presenting a nice heart and lung shot with a steel beam behind it, but I decided against it in the end. Ah, close. So close. Finally. His luck ran out. This one definitely smells something appetizing. Not that he'll have much of an appetite now. Now, these early night sight units didn't have any onboard recording abilities. Instead, you had to use an external recording device connected to the unit with a cable. And that's what the odd blinking is, a bad connection in the cable. Ah, there goes another one in that opening. Maybe I should have been scanning all the time. Oh, hold the phone. Here's a sitter here. That's another one in the bag. Uh, look at the tail. Does that not give you the jitters or what? Well, it's got quite wet. Oh, wait. Late. Oh, my teeth fell out again. 
Anyway, it's got quite late and I wouldn't mind going to my bed so I'm calling it a night. That's one of my dollops of Nutella and golden syrup. Looks like somebody had the runs, maybe that's why they weren't interested in it. They all seem to be good big adult rats anyway. Oh, I hope that's the bullock and not a big rat. Time to move on, methinks. I know it's quite a meagre bag by most people's standards, but for one of my usual ratting outings, it's quite a decent bag. I do have another night's footage that I might edit and upload at some time, but until then, take care of yourselves folks.